Hi everyone, today we're going to discuss NASA's contract award to SpaceX for its Artemis human landing system. Welcome to Reaching for the Moon, hosted by me, Ed Grace. For those of you that don't know me, I worked on the Apollo program for 10 years while at MIT and was a member of the Apollo 13 mission operations team that was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Before we get on to the SpaceX human landing system contract, I'd like to bring you up to date on the Mars Ingenuity helicopter. By the way, did you notice my new shirt? Sandy got it for me. Ingenuity. Ingenuity recently made its initial flight on Mars. It was only a short 30 second, 10 foot vertical high flight, but it was very successful. I've got a short clip of that flight, which was taken by Perseverance, which was located about 200 feet away on Van Zyl Overlook. Here is the clip. Nice flight. Ingenuity is going to be now scheduling several more flights in the next 30 days. JPL Mission Control celebrated loudly as they should. Approximately a year ago, NASA awarded three U.S. companies contracts to design and develop the first phase of the human landing system that's going to be used with the agency's Artemis program. The Artemis program is targeting to land the first woman and the next man on the surface of the moon by 2024. The three companies scheduled were Blue Origin, Dynetics, and SpaceX. Blue Origin and Dynetics both assembled a team of companies to support their development efforts. Dynetics teamed with many smaller companies and was awarded about $250 million. Blue Origin teamed with Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and Draper Labs and received about $570 million. SpaceX, by contrast, submitted a version of its Mars vehicle as a lunar lander and was considered the most risky of the three proposals. SpaceX only received $135 million for its development contract. NASA announced at the time of the award last year that based on the results of each company's proposals, NASA would select one or two or three candidates in early 2021 to proceed with the development of the Artemis human landing system based upon funding available. Both Blue Origin and Dynetics developed full-size mock-ups of their proposed human landing system and publicly displayed them. SpaceX was very private with its HLS information. SpaceX, meanwhile, built several full-scale prototypes of the Starship and conducted many actual flight tests into space, none specifically that were disclosed for any human landing system demonstration. For the last five years, SpaceX has largely self-funded development of Starship as the reusable upper stage of a massive rocket Super Heavy. Recently, NASA announced that a variant of SpaceX's Starship spacecraft optimized to land NASA astronauts on the moon has passed NASA's first level review. Both the Blue Origin and Dynetics teams also passed NASA's first level review. SpaceX plans to use the basic Starship model on programs other than HLS, but unfortunately has not had any successful landings of its star boost, Starship booster yet. One of the major issues with using SpaceX Starship is the size of the vehicle. SpaceX's Starship vehicle measures 50 meters from its nose cone to the landing legs. When landed, the astronauts are going to be high above the lunar surface. At the last minute, it appears as if SpaceX has designed a portable elevator system that could be used once Starship lands on the moon for the astronauts to use when descending or ascending between Starship and the moon. 
During the development phase, NASA identified several significant weaknesses of SpaceX's Starship if it was to be used for the HLS. A propulsion system that's notably complex requires numerous highly complex launch, rendezvous, and refueling operations. And SpaceX's past performance on the Crew Dragon and Falcon Heavy development, both of which experienced considerable scheduled delays. Despite all these issues, NASA recently announced that it had awarded an HLS contract to SpaceX for $2.9 billion to use SpaceX Starship to take astronauts from lunar orbit to the surface of the moon and back. Much to the surprise of most everyone, NASA awarded only one contract. NASA limited the award to only the first crewed landing with the stipulation that SpaceX must first perform a successful non-crewed landing prior to ferrying any astronauts to and from the moon's surface. The announcement of using Starship for the HLS raises a few questions. The astronauts are scheduled to launch in their, own, their Orion spacecraft while being sent to the moon using the space launch system. Presumably, they would meet up with the Starship in lunar orbit for docking and then transfer themselves to Starship for the journey to the moon and back. How is Starship going to be transported to lunar orbit? Based upon what we know at the present time, the astronauts could possibly do the entire trip in Starship and eliminate the need for the space launch system, except that the Orion spacecraft is necessary for the return to Earth because it has the heat shield which is needed for a re-entry. Starship will need to be refueled for the trip to the lunar surface and the, re and the return to uh, lunar orbit. In the current Artemis mission schedule, there is not a mission listed for SpaceX to achieve a non-crewed lunar landing. There are some major advantages, though, to the Star SpaceX Starship selection. Cost. Obviously, this is going to be the lowest cost of the three options available to NASA. Starship is also 100% reusable. It will not be leaving any significant pieces or parts of its HLS system on the lunar surface. Both Blue Origin and Dynetics would leave portions of their human landing system on the lunar surface, and these pieces would need to be replaced for each future mission to the lunar surface. NASA has already announced that Gateway will not be included in the Artemis III initial lunar landing mission. I assume that we will be seeing some major revisions to the current Artemis schedule of missions. In discussing the, U the Human Landing System Award during a press conference this week, NASA officials carefully stated that the Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft remain essential parts of the Artemis program. But in reality, NASA may be putting the Space Launch System rocket, which is five years behind schedule and significantly over budget, out of business. With Starship, NASA has chosen what appears to be the best technical solution available to accomplish NASA's stated goal of a sustainable lunar exploration program. Starship will be able to take far more astronauts and cargo to the moon than any other solution available to NASA. Plus, Starship will do the job for far less money and way more often. Well, with that, that brings us to the end of today's video. If you like today's video, give us a like. Hit the subscribe and notification bells in order to receive an email every time Reaching for the Moon posts a new video. Thank you for watching. Until next time, remember always, failure is not an option. Bye.